Hey, amiable people, and on today's vlog, we're going to be looking at Pirate Party Women of the High Sea. This is for 2-4 to four players, ages 10 and up, and takes about 20 minutes to play. And this is published by Seaport Games. So this is a two-player setup for Pirate Party Women of the High Sea. After shuffling the main deck, each player will receive a starting hand of eight cards. The goal of the game is to get the most victory points by playing sets of cards and getting the victory points based on the cards. The way the game ends is if one of the players extinguishes their hand, or if someone eventually will draw the Kraken attack. This will immediately end the game and then you'll go to scoring. So let's go ahead and start talking about ways you can play cards from your hand. The first way you can start playing cards from your hand and claiming victory points is playing sets. And a set is three cards, the base of three cards, so at least three cards. And those cards that need to be in that set are one, the captain. And when you play a captain, they have an ability, and you play it at that moment. And if you can't fulfill the ability, then you just forfeit the ability. Next, you're going to need crew. At least one crew card, which could be a first mate, a cook, or deckhands. And last but not least, there are these cards to be your third card. A map, cannon, treasure chest, or a bird, which is, in this case, a pelican. Now, there are these ships that can be played in sets, and they don't have to match the suit, because when you play sets, they all have to be in the same suit. But for the ships, like I said, they can only be played in sets, but they are worth a lot of victory points at the end of the game, so you want to try to at least play them as po much as possible. The next way to play cards out of your hand are playing kinds. Three of a kind to be exact, at least three of a kind. So there are a couple cards that actually can't be played like this, and that would be the captain and the ships. Those have to be played in sets. Also, there's this cool uh, thing you can do if you're able to do it is there are three mermaids in the entire deck and if you can go ahead and play them as three of a kind then that is going to give you a sweet bonus another way to play cards out of your hand is to play matches you can match your opponent's set or your set or an opponent kind or your kind cards. So that's just adding another card to that set or kind and playing it in front of you, whether it's uh, part of your set or your kind cards or your opponents. There are also some other cards you can play in your turn where you have these adventure cards that will give you special one-time abilities and then they will be placed in your scoring pile to score later at the end of the game. And then also you have this booty card. This card is a lot of points and is a standalone card that you can play by itself, but you can't pair or kind, put this in a kind or set with uh, treasure chest cards. So now quickly, I wanted to mention the mermaids. I had talked about them a little bit earlier during talking about kinds, but um, these can also be used as wilds for captain cards and crew cards, which is pretty cool when you're stuck in a pinch. But yeah, definitely if you can make them three of a kind with all the mermaids, that's going to be a lot of points for that special bonus that you'll get for doing that. And so with all that being said, play will consist of players playing cards, as many cards as they can, whether they are sets, kinds, or matches, or adventure cards, or if they have a booty card, they can go and play that to get a lot of points. And then once you can't play that anymore, play any more cards, you'll go ahead and draw a card off the top of the deck to signal uh, the end of your turn. And then the next player will go ahead 
and play as many cards as they can, trying to extinguish their hand. And if they don't, then they'll go ahead and draw a card, signaling the end of their turn. Play will continue until one player draws the Kraken or completely extinguishes their hand where they have nothing left. And in these two cases, there's something interesting that happens. With a player that extinguishes their hand, all of their players with cards still in their hand, they don't count as negative. Now, if someone draws the Kraken, plays it, everyone's hand that has cards still there counts as negatives to uh, their final score, which is interesting. So you're kind of like trying to hold on to cards, but you don't really want to because you don't know when the Kraken's going to show up because you shuffled in the deck. So it's just a, a little interesting uh, kind of uh, pusher luck, I guess a little sprinkle pusher luck that's within the game. So let's get into the final thoughts about the game, Pirate Party Women of the High Sea. The first thing I want to note is the theme and gameplay mesh very well, and I thought that was a very enjoyable experience while playing the game. Next, I want to talk about that there is a lot of take that within this game, especially with some of the adventure cards, and so and even with the abilities of captains. So that's just something to keep in mind if you aren't a fan of take that. I had, this may not be the game for you then. Next, while we were playing the game, Sarah mentioned it felt a lot like playing the 52 card deck game Rummy. And I sat there and thought about it for a little bit, but like, yeah, this has a very rummy feel to it. And also, I want to mention that this is a pretty easy light game. After you get through teaching it to people, it's pretty intuitive and easy to learn. And definitely one that if you have people in your life that aren't super hard gamers, or at least know how to play Rummy, then they'll, pretty catch, they'll catch on to this game pretty quickly. Next, about the Kraken. So the Kraken is a card that will end the game. And while in setup, when you first deal out a hand, if the Kraken is there, then you take it out, replace the card from the, uh, and give, it, give another card to a player, and then shuffle the Kraken back in the deck. But then that's the thing. You shuffled the Kraken back in the deck, and there are some, but then this is a card that ends the game. There are some games that uh, have a card like this, and they'll actually say split the deck in half or split in three quarters. You put these certain cards in uh, these particular areas, and we just wish that we would at least be able to put the Kraken in like the second or the like the the lower half of the cards and shuffle those up. So at least we get uh, a little more of gameplay in because who knows, you could shuffle the deck and then someone could have their turn and then play the Kraken. And then now people are in negative points and it just seems like uh, we, we wished that there were somewhere in the rules that just said like as, as set up, you know, you shuffle the deck, cut it into, put the Kraken in the second half, and you just shuffle that up. So at least there's a little more gameplay to it. But again, this is there's a lot more cards. There's only one Kraken, so it's not like there's other cards that could possibly end the game. Something that I thought that was really cool while setting up and learning the rules for the game is setting a point on the end game, where it's a certain number of victory points, or you play... Uh, three rounds or three games of this and whoever is best two out of three is the winner and they called it parlay so it was just like you know that's pirate negotiation which I thought was really thematic and just really cool and something that you know it's just yeah you could play three games or you could set a, a, a certain number of victory points to play to but when they said oh it's parlay I was just like yeah that's like super thematic and just thought that was really cool and uh, it was really a joy within the game while reading the rules so that's it that's our video on pirate party women of the high seas we hope you all enjoyed this video and found it very informative because this is coming to kickstarter september 14th and if you're not subscribed to the channel get subscribed so you can stay up to date on all of our upcoming vlogs so without further ado we'll catch you all next time toodles